wrestling? Like what kind of sparked your love for it? Cause you spent so much time. Um, literally as a, a 10, 11 year old kid, just flipping the channels and one day seeing it and going, wow, that's, this is awesome. Like, I love this and, and just fell in love with the biz, like wrestling itself. And I was just nothing but a fanboy. And I remember telling my, my, my sister when I was 12, I was like, you know, one day I'm going to do that. And she giggled and said, yeah, no, you're right. And then lo and behold, there I stumbled into the business. You know, I, I, I tell the story. I was working as an accountant in New York and I would come home on weekends um, and roll around my friend's backyard wrestling. And I'm doing the air quotes here. Uh, backyard wrestling, <laughs> and we would rent a ring from Larry Sharp at the Monster Factory. Oh, wow. Uh, and would, yeah, and we would put on our own little pay-per-views once a month. We had our, you know, cardboard cutout belts, and we had our own, every every person was like five different characters, and we put on a pay-per-view. So uh, one day, Larry Sharp stu <laughs> stood by and watched us, and at the end, he's like, hey, you're pretty big, pretty athletic. You ever think about doing this for real? And I was like, me yeah okay he goes you can i'll put you on my next show sell 50 tickets you can be on my next show so i sold four bought the other 46 myself and that's how i was on my first show i love it that's so like old school i that's kind of like what i was still experiencing when i first started coming in is that whole paying your dues and someone trying to give you a chance like all right kid here's your shot what are you gonna do with it <laughs> yeah here's your shot you got one chance kid Get out the park or strike out, but we're going to figure it out. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I love who, Do you remember exactly who you saw when you were flipping through the channels? I want to say, like, I remember Dusty Rhodes being one of my first images oh, of wrestling. Nice. Um, yeah, because the NWA, I grew up in the Northeast, so, you know, WWF was popular, but the NWA was on, like, and you're too young to remember this, but back in the day when we had to turn the TV channel with our hands on the dial, it was on channel 17 out of Philadelphia. And uh, that was the NWA. And I remember, I think it was like Dusty Rhodes or something like that, or it could have been the Rock and Roll Express, but either one, I was just mesmerized by what I was seeing. Mesmerized. That is so awesome. I missed all of that. You know, when I when I first finally got to see wrestling, it was already like the Monday Night Wars were happening, you know, so like I wasn't uh, even allowed to watch it. So once I started getting into wrestling and actually pursuing it and doing it, I had to go back and watch all the territories and and everything like that. And then I was just like, oh. Wow, mind blown. Yeah. This is magical. Like, what am I watching now? Like, this, this stuff is amazing. <laughs> yeah, like the territory days, you know, between like the old UWF, uh, you know, Bill Watts' territory or NWA or world class out in Texas or the AWA. My goodness, man. Some great wrestling. You got to see guys who would later go on to the WWF and become huge stars, but you got to see them, you know, like a Kurt Henning. You, you realize how good he was, but you didn't know why he was good. He's just really good. And, you know, you got to see, you know, a, a young, you know, Hulk Hogan or, or people like that. And it was kind of cool seeing them there. And it's like watching like minor league baseball. You know, you get to see these guys grow up and all of a sudden now they play for the Phillies or for the Yankees. It's like, I remember when. I remember back in my day. <laughs> back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I am. Um, when I started like rewatching stuff, it, and I kind of feel like what's old was like new again, you know, it was, so it was exciting to watch. And uh, he never missed, I never saw him miss the gum curtaining. Never missed. Never. No, Loved it. He never. would just go. I, <laughs> I, I, he ne I remember one time he used to do the same thing with the, with the, um, with the towel. He would throw it over his shoulder. I remember one time he threw it over his shoulder and it landed like on like um, Mr. Hughes's shoulder, like perfectly landed on his shoulder. I was like, <gasps> There's nothing this guy can't do. No. <laughs> I love it. Um, I grew up in Massachusetts, so I'm very familiar with the, the East Coast. And uh, do you remember like Lincoln Park when all the wrestlers would come to Lincoln Park? Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, my yes, mom actually was like four years old 
and she remembers meeting Andre the Giant in Lincoln Park when like really? Chief J Strongbow would come, um, Killer Kowalski, Andre the Giant, so 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 many guys, right? And she he scared the the living daylights out of her because he just sees this young little girl and he goes hi, and he puts his hand on her <laughs> and it like covers her whole entire head like this. <laughs> to this day, she never forgot that. That's that's the stuff, man. <laughs> that's I I remember meeting as a kid. I remember meeting Gorilla Monsoon at mm. a car wash, and he wasn't Whoa. as big as Andre. But but I remember my brother and I both put our feet in his shoe. In the same shoe. In the same shoe. <laughs> and it's like oh wow, God. he's huge. <laughs> that is so cool. Now, and now, then fast forward, I, I, and you get. To... <laughs> I always ask this question: What made you fall in love with wrestling? Oh man! It it before I even truly understood what the business was, there were so many aspects of everything that I ever wanted to do with my life. And it was in mm -hmm. wrestling. I always knew that I wanted to be an actress like Betty Davis. Always knew. I fell in love with her and I fell in love with old Hollywood films uh, when I was a young kid. Um, I grew up watching like H.R. Puff and stuff with Mama Cass Elliot and Billy Hayes and Jack Wilde. Like that was the kind of like childhood I had, even though it was like outdated when I came along. Um, and I always knew I wanted to travel and I loved to read. I always loved like Stephen King and all, all these different books when I was a kid. So I always knew I wanted to be a writer. I loved public speaking. I taught it in college and stuff. And then I always was into sports. I was a tomboy. I wasn't allowed to wear makeup. So I played sports and martial arts and all that. And I was like, that's for wrestling. And I remember <laughs> like you, I was flipping through the channels one day. It was uh, my, my first real memory because I had to sneak little bits and pieces, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed to watch it. And <laughs> I remember one day it was Christmas Eve and I'm flipping through the channels. I'm in my 70s bunk beds and I'm supposed to be asleep. Santa's coming. And all of a sudden I stop on this channel and I hear a din din. Dun, 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 dun. And then there's this big giant Titan Tron and there's this countdown going and the rock is in the ring PO'd to the max and all of a sudden it's like the debut of Chris Jericho and I oh. remember him saying I'm here to save the WWF and then I remember the rock shaking his head like this and the microphone like he did and he's like who said the WWF needs saving and the entire arena just exploded with emotion and I was just like this, this, I, this is my life now. <laughs> I'm all about <laughs> this. This is what I'm going to do. And like you, I was like, okay, Taylor, yep, it's a face. She'll grow out of it. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm still in this wonderful world now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, completely.